to this day, man. Yep. And they know they're in, their, they're, they're in their last go round, so they really gonna come down on us. And they're gonna try to push, they're gonna really try to push that chip. That's their last hurrah, so to speak. The mark of the beast. And like I said before, these different Israelites that are following these different groups of Israelites, the ones that are teaching that the mark of the beast is an embargo in Christianity, they're going to really start waking up. And then they're going to slowly start listening to what we got to say, man. And I can't stress that enough, man. That's a, that's a major, that's a one of the most major, you got major prophecies and minor prophecies, right? A major prophecy is 70 Another major prophecy is when we came over here to serve slavery, all right? Another major prophecy is the mark of the beast. That's a major prophecy. That's one of the most major prophecies of all the prophecies because that's the last prophecy before the destruction comes. And, and the chip, the, the mark of the beast is being administered to people right now. Go ahead. It says, this is Revelation 12 and 17. So the biggest benefit, I think, is convenience. It basically simplifies your life. And that's why I think people find it interesting because you don't have to have keys. Uh, you don't have to use uh, tags or anything else for using printers. You can um, uh, do airline fares with it. You can also um, go to your local gym, etc. So it basically replaces a lot of things. You have other, you know, other communication devices for, whether it be credit cards or keys. And of course, putting things into your body is, 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 is quite a big step to do. And and it was even for me at first, you know, thinking like, why would I do this? But then on the other hand, I mean, people have been implanting things in their body like pacemakers and stuff to control your heart. That's a way, way more serious thing than having a, a small chip that actually can communicate with devices. The data that you could possibly get from a chip that is embedded in your body is a lot different from the data that you can get from a smartphone. So, you know, conceptually, you could get data about your health, you could get data about your whereabouts, how, you, how often you're working, how long you're working, if you're taking toilet breaks and things like that. All of that data could conceivably be collected. So then the question is, what happens to it afterwards? What is it used for? I'm certain that this will be the natural way to add another dimension to our everyday life. I mean, for me to be able to seamlessly interact with everything digital around me, means me leaving a keychain, which, however, is a 5,000-year-old invention. It's kind of lame. And carrying money around, a wallet, and plastic cards. To, it, it's, yeah, it's obvious. I mean, it's the next step, the next natural step for electronics is to move into the body. I want to be a part of the future. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. I saw this at a fair uh, once and got really excited because it finally got into using it in movies and now it's uh, available for uh, common people. <laughs> That's it. Hopefully I can leave my keys at home and just keep this. <laughs> I usually lose a lot of things like my keys and everything, so this will give me access and uh, help me a lot more.